Hi everyone, I'm Cindy and I'm an Australian homeschooler. Today I'll be doing a walkthrough of Beast Academy. Beast Academy is an American maths program written specifically for advanced and gifted learners. It has a really unique delivery method and I'm pretty excited to share this with you today. My son loves it. This program is available in levels two to five, supposedly for grades two to five, but some of these questions are even too hard for me. They make my brain hurt even more than the Singapore maths bar modeling questions. So that's saying something. So let's have a look at these books. Each level has four guidebooks, A, B, C, and D for the four terms and four corresponding workbooks. Level two also has an extra puzzle book. I've only got level 2A and 2B on the table because after these levels, I decided I was too cheap to pay for shipping and we went with the online version instead. So I'll show you chapter one just uh, and you'll have a good idea of what I mean by unique delivery method. This is chapter one in the 2A guidebook. So you can see that it's in a comic book form and it's written for the student, not the parent, but of course you can read this together. This chapter is on place value. All these characters are beasts because it's Beast Academy. And if your child does this program, they are also a math beast. So the teacher here is Captain Kraken and he also happens to be a pirate. So he brings in his satchel of coins one, one day and he says, we're going to count our coins. I'm gonna put a mark on the paper for each coin and we can count them and they say, yeah, that's okay, but I think we can do it in a better way. How about we put them all in a row? So they put them in a row here and they said, yeah, that's all right, but I think we can improve this even more. What if we put them in rows of all the same dots? So now they've arranged them in groups of 10 and here's a few left over. And now it makes it very easy to count. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and four left over equals 64. So now all the beast students have their own bucket of coins to count. And this is what they've done. This student says, instead of 10 dots for 10, I've written a line. So I've got lines for my tens and these little marks for my ones. And Kraken says, that's a great idea. And did you know that pirates actually have their own way of writing 10? They write them in X's. So they all have a go of doing their numbers with X's and dots. So here's the beast students work and they get to this student and they say, okay, well done. You did the X's and the dots, but it's still a bit hard to read. So I think it would be easier if you put all the X's together and then put your dots. And now it's easy to know what number you have. And then here's a little summary at the end before you go to your workbook. It says a dot for one coin, an X for 10 coins, and C for 100 coins. And you've probably noticed that they actually haven't done anything with hundreds in this chapter, but they've introduced it here. And that's pretty typical of Beast Academy. They expect you to use the skills that you've learned during the chapter and apply it to a new piece of information. Once you've learnt a thing, they're adding on and it moves very quickly. Uh, it's also uh, useful if your children know their times tables before they start this program, um, because as you can see here, they're expecting you to know that 10 X's will equal one C. So we'll have a look at the workbook. Okay, so they've done some examples here. Here are their coins and they've put what the symbols should be for the coins. And then you get a go at doing three questions. And when I say Math, uh, Beast Academy moves pretty fast, this is what I mean. You've done your three basic questions and now they're adding on. So now they've done the symbols for you and you have to write them in the fewest pirate symbols possible. So if you notice here, there's more than 10 dots. So if you can actually replace 10 of those dots with an X to write them in fewer symbols. So you do a page of those, and then now you're doing addition with these symbols. After you've done some addition, they move on to word problems. They have a star question here, and star questions means it's a little bit harder. 
With this particular question, it's a word problem, but using subtraction. So again, you're using what you know to apply it to this new piece of information. They haven't covered subtraction, but they're wanting you to give it a go. Um, and it's okay if they don't get it, because of course they'll cover subtraction later on in a later chapter. So you can see from this how conceptual this program is. They're teaching place value, but they haven't even shown the Arabic numerals zero to nine. They're teaching from the ground up. They've used X's, C's, dots to represent the number system to emphasize the why and the how. So who is Beast Academy for? The website says it's for advanced and gifted learners, but what do they mean by that? This is not simply an accelerated program for high achievers. As you can see, even in this early example, the writers have worked really hard to understand the curiosity of a gifted thinker. This curriculum is highly conceptual, fast paced and requires a high level of critical thinking and problem solving. There are very few routine type questions. So if you have a child who requires a lot of repetition and revision, then this program might not be a good fit. I'm just going to show you some of the puzzle type questions now because I think it's um, a pretty fun and unique feature of this program. Okay, so here we've got a digit difference grid. Numbers in squares that share a side must be 1, 10 or 100 apart. So for example, a square next to 355, this one, can be filled with any of these six numbers. It can be plus one, 10 or 100, or it can be minus one, 10 and 100. A number can be used only once in a digit difference grid. So if you wanna know how to fill in this blank number, how do we get from this number to this number? Well, we can subtract 100 and add one, or we can add one and subtract 100. So there we've got two options. We can use 254 or we can use 355. But they've already used that here. So now we've only got one option and that's our answer, 254. Well, I don't know about you, but I think this is pretty hard for grade two. So now you've got a page where they're all in lines. And then once you've done one page of that, they're adding on. And now you do your grids. Okay, here's another type of puzzle type question. This is the honeycomb path puzzle. The goal is to fill every empty hexagon with a number so that a path of consecutive numbers crosses every hexagon. Meaning that if you start here, you need to be able to count by ones using adjacent hexagons until you reach the end. At the back of the book, you've got some hints. So if your child is struggling with some questions, they can come here for some clues. So if we go to the digit different answers, they've got a clue here and it says, what two numbers can connect 182 to 83? So their clue is there are two numbers and you'll have to choose one of them, presumably the one that is not repeated here. And I've got the same clue here. You've got two numbers that you can choose. So which one are you going to choose? And in this grid, they're saying, well, you can work out these two first, and then you can work out this one. And in this one, they're telling you to work out this one first, and then you can work out the other two. So there are pretty good clues and hints here if your child is struggling. At the back, there's detailed answers, which is really helpful because they don't have a separate um, parent resource book for this curriculum. But as you can see, they've done all the workings out, so it's pretty clear how they get to each answer. And if we go to the digit difference grid answers, they've written in between each square what the difference is. So this is plus 10, plus 10, plus 1, take away 100, so it's clear how they got to that answer. So what's my key takeaway? This is literally the hardest math program on the market for this age level. In my last video, I talked about Singapore maths being above grade standard. Well, this is a higher level again. My son just finished level four Singapore maths and he is now doing level four Beast Academy. Had he gone into level five, he would have knowledge gaps and would have found the program too overwhelming. 
Students who are used to blasting through a worksheet in 40 seconds will be surprised to be stumped so often on the challenging questions offered in this program. It is possible they won't be able to complete every question on a worksheet. Some sessions might be spent entirely on tackling one single question. This will frustrate them to no end at first and parents will find this very painful to watch. But don't be discouraged. Don't give up on the program because it's hard. Most kids will soon learn to relish the challenge and perseverance is a great life skill. So a couple of observations for an Australian context. Firstly, because this is a US curriculum, it uses imperial measurements and US currency. So you'll have to go through and convert everything to metric measures and Australian currency. Secondly, their scope can't be neatly compared to any traditional curriculum and certainly not to the Australian curriculum framework. So it can be hard to know what level to place your child in. As a rule of thumb, I recommend you put them two levels down their grade unless they show exceptional ability in maths. Okay, well, that's all my thoughts for today. If I've missed something or if you have any questions, please comment below. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching.